A month ago, a representative from the Fort Worth Transit Company's Drivers Union appeared before the city council to say they needed something done about their working conditions. At that time, E.D. Rockefeller, a spokesman for the drivers, said that if something isn't done and soon, a strike is inevitable. Today, the drivers walked off their jobs. Pickets began marching in front of the Transit Authority headquarters at 6 o'clock this morning. And as workers and students began preparing to go about their day's business, they found themselves without transportation. Approximately 19 buses are running, one for each route. At mid-afternoon, they were practically empty, as always. But rush hour this morning, and again this afternoon, pointed up the need for something to be done and quick. The Transit Authority, through its attorney, Buzz Kimball, says it is not financially capable of doing anything. From the very beginning, the union has demanded $750,000 uh, in economic uh, 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 up, uplift in their wages and fringe benefits. Uh, the, the Fort Worth Transit Company, uh, up to July 31st, 1969, for the seven months ending that period, only made $19,167. So, as you can see, there's just nothing there. The drivers have indicated their awareness of the company's low profit margin, but say that doesn't help feed their families. They say either the city must subsidize the transit company or buy it outright. The city is not inclined to do either. For some people, the transit system means money, like getting to work. What would happen for you if the buses quit running altogether? Well, I, I'd really be out of a job because I depend on the bus to get to work every day, and I don't like this not one bit. I mean, without it, I'm really lost. I don't like it, and I'm lost. That's the way a lot of people are going to feel in Fort Worth if the buses quit rolling. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News, reporting. I anticipated the vote to go this way um, after last Monday's meeting. It was indicated that uh, Raymond Williams' nomination didn't have a majority of the council. And uh, my only hope was that uh, in uh, the postponement of the final vote until this morning, probably in a week's time, I could, could have picked up some additional support from Mr. Williams. He's a good man. and. Uh, I really am sorry. I'm truly sorry that he wasn't selected. Now, well, the bill I've introduced, along with 24 of my colleagues, is a bill to provide humane treatment and uh, set certain standards for humane treatment of animals used in the laboratories of the nation. Congressman Rogers, uh, do you feel that uh, the uh, controversy between various w animal welfare agencies throughout the country is impeding their research, medical research? Well, uh, actually, I think some people have felt that if uh, standards were set, this might be some impediment to research. Really, it will not. It will be helpful because a healthy animal, if it's treated humanely, and it is a healthy and kept to be a healthy animal, will, will bring better results in the research. Where if you have a sickly animal, uh, the results of that uh, scientific research will be very poor. So it will help research uh, as well as bring humane treatment to the animals. A man came to the window and put a box, a roughly covered box, into her drawer and said, 
give me that money. She was proving money. She had some stacks of money laying in front of her, and she didn't know what he meant. She thought that he had a bunch of change, and she said, I'm sorry, you'll have to take this change on the inside. You have too much here for us to handle on a busy day like this. Oh, he says, no, you don't understand me. I want the money. And she says, well, I don't know what you're doing. Are you wanting to cash a check? And he said, no, I want to rob you. And he had a box with some wires around it and a wire attachment to the inside of the car. And she was under the impression that he had some kind of a dynamite or a time bomb or some thing to blow her up with. We don't know whether she did or not. But she then took three bones of money that she had in front of her and laid it inside of the drawer. And he reached in and, believe it or not, only picked up two of them and left one. He's got a stack of 20s and a stack of 10s. He got $1,500. And uh, as far as we know, that's all that's missing and was proving her money. But that's all she stuck out there, and he left one.